Hello everyone, uh, I am recently back from Canada and was obviously away for the Western Derby. So that is the reason why I was not around to uh, grace your screens with another depressing Eagles video. But there is a bit swirling away, bubbling away under the surface, whatever analogy you want to use, uh, at West Coast. And to quote Andy from Parks and Rec, change is the foot. So in the last seven to 10 days, I've kind of lost track. Um, we've had three retirements at West Coast. Shannon Hearn first hangs up the boots. That one was probably the least unexpected. The guy's like 36. And frankly, he's looked 30 plus since we drafted him at 18 and uh, followed closely by Luke Shuey, one that was a particular knife through the heart. And then most recently, Nick Nat Nui is deciding he is not going on any further, but sounds like he's ruptured his Achilles, which is yeah, a horrifying injury and he probably wouldn't be playing much next year anyway. So this, you know, as much as anything kind of symbolizes a real changing of the guard at West Coast. And we know this has been coming, but it hasn't really been formalized. So obviously in the last couple of years, we've been labeled a rebuilding side because, you know, obviously the premiership window's over and it has been over, you know, probably since midway of 2021, that game against Richmond where JK sunk them late, that was the last time I believed in this Eagles team, unfortunately. And when I say believed in, I mean, you know, a chance for finals. That was the last Last time. But there's no doubt, you know, the list with the way it was with so many injured aging veterans, uh, there has been obviously calls to transition the list and uh, replace it with youngsters. And we have done that over the last couple of years. We have drafted heavy. So any notion, you know, that the Eagles have been in denial and thinking they have been in premiership contention or finals contention since 2021, that's been absolute bullshit. But nonetheless, this has been a significant time. Um, I don't think, uh, or I certainly didn't expect all three of Hearn, Shuey and Nat Nui to retire this year. Nat Nui still had a contract for next year. And uh, frankly, all three, or particularly Hearn and Shuey, were playing to a level where they could have justified a spot in terms of being best 22 next year, but obviously their bodies gave way. So it's three significant retirements. I don't know if we've had one off season where three players of that magnitude have retired all at once. Obviously it follows a year last year where we lost JK, Redden and uh, Shepard. I think you can kind of count as last year. It was kind of the year before. We're down to, I think nine premiership players left on the list. So the, the transition is there and not only that, it's a transition from being one of the older, like banged up sides of the competition to potentially being one of the younger sides of the comp next year. So not only that, the marketing is going to change. The players that you see, you know, pass it on posters everywhere. It's going to change. You know, we've lost two captains in one hit. As an aside, it's been a long time since I think a captain has retired as captain at West Coast. It's an emotional time, to be honest. And uh, it's it's kind of a reminder of how old I'm getting as well. And I remember all three players getting drunk. Drafted. And Nat Nui and Shui in particular were the great white hopes of this club, um, you know, post-2007 when the club fell to its knees. 2008 was a horrid year as a West Coast fan, and certainly in terms of the performances. I don't know if it's as bad as this year, let's be honest. But nonetheless, you know, Nat Nui, Shui, amongst others, Tom Swift, they were kind of billed as the group of players that would get us through to our next premiership. And, um, you know, thankfully, that was correct. All three are significant players too, like Shannon Hearn, absolute stalwart, um, should have been All-Australian captain. He was at least All-Australian twice. Luke Shuey may be the best player I've ever seen that didn't win an All-Australian jumper. Certainly the best midfielder we had, you know, per, post Cousins, Kerr and Judd. And, you know, probably my favorite player ever. And that's another symbolic sort of shift as well for me personally, is that I'm probably never going to have a favorite player like I did with Luke Shuey because fundamentally, the age I'm getting now, like the players getting drafted this year will be 12 years younger than me. So there is something very different to being like a young guy who idolizes footy players like I did with Luke Shuey, who grows up pedestalizing them, seeing as a, a genuine celebrity, can do no wrong. It's very different to be a fan of a team when you're older than most of the playing group. So for me, that's kind of a, a real symbolic shift, but for the club in a more real sense, is a real transition to the next generation taking us through. And in particular, in particular with the loss of Nat Nui now, it kind of makes me increasingly confident that the Eagles are going to draft Harley Reid. So every footy club, but particularly this footy club, has always had some degree of a poster boy. We had Cuz back in the day, and then obviously Judd sort of transcended him because he was the best player of arguably his generation. Following that, there was Nick Nat, and um, obviously maybe not the best player of his generation, but an absolute champion of the game. Three All-Australian jumpers. Probably could have had more. The guy was absolutely ravaged by injury throughout his career. He did two ACLs and one back-to-back all, back all Australians after that. But my point being here is that we need a new poster boy, and 
Sure, you know, you could certainly argue the best course of action for us in terms of getting young players on our list to transition the list quickly is to trade pick one for a number of first rounders. You know, pick four, let's say it's Daniel Curtin and two late first rounders. That is tempting and may be the best course of action. But upon reflection, I do think that there is going to be an allure for West Coast to get the next poster boy and who better than arguably the best number one prospect we've ever seen. It may not prove that he's the best player from the draft, obviously, but West Coast need a PR win and they need to sell hope to their members and fans and drafting the most talked about draft prospect that's ever been is a good step towards building that faith back amongst Eagles fans and it has been a dire week so the Western Derby performance was you know probably the second worst loss of the season or third I don't know the fact that we're having this conversation really reeks Sydney by far and away was worse we were lost by 11 more goals than we did in the Derby and then the other Hawthorne game in Tasmania also stands out but from waking up this morning and uh, absorbing all the news that's hit Perth it does sound like there has been a change in narrative around Adam Simpson and there is a chance that he gets moved on at the end of the year, either by his own volition or we tap him on the shoulder. And I think the reason for that is that losing the Derby in such a significant way, that's a whole new PR hit that West Coast hadn't encountered this year. And it has been pathetic, but playing that poorly in a Derby, I reckon that's ruffled some feathers with some of the big dogs at West Coast. And there is going to be change. So we know that there's going to be three retirements. We know that we've uh, let go of a... I don't even know Warren Kofed's um, actual title, but he was one of the you know most prominent figures in terms of our strength and conditioning or high performance. I, I forget the titles, to be honest. But he's in that fitness and strength and conditioning um, aspect of the football department. He's going to be gone. We're potentially going to get a new coach. We're going to get a new face of the football club, a new captain. There's going to be other changes as well. You know, Reading reports, the Eagles have sounded out uh, Don Pike and Dean Cox for a number of roles. Dean Cox potentially as an assistant coach, although you know there's a chance he gets a look in as senior coach depending on how things go with Simpson. Don Pike interestingly as well uh, has been talked about as a potential CEO replacement for uh, Trevor Nisbet. He's got some experience on the Eagles board. Obviously a prominent figure at West Coast uh, premiership player for us and uh, obviously is credited with a lot of our improvement around that 2015 period where we made the grand final. Obviously got Adelaide to a grand final, been involved with Sydney since. So this is one of the most transitional phases at West Coast we've probably ever seen. 2007 to 2008 was a big transitional phase, but more so from a playing on-field sense with Jardin Cuz gone, um, Chick gone, Kerr was permanently injured. That was a big transitional phase. 2018 was another big one. We let go of Pritis. We got a new stadium. We got a new jumper. Everything was completely refreshed, but to, not to the extent that I'm going to see this year, which is potentially a new coach, new captain, refreshed playing group through list management changes, potentially a new CEO and new fitness guy. This really is the start of a new era as far as I'm concerned for the West Coast because 2022 and 2023 will probably be reflected on as the, the entrails from which the dead cat we have dragged this club for the last two years <laughs> as in it will be the back end of that premiership side that probably pushed on a little bit too long and you know what i'm comfortable with the fact that we decided to back in a an aging list and the reason for that is we couldn't have foreseen the injury issues and that's exacerbated how bad the the team looks at the moment we had issues we had issues back in 2021 mid-year in 2021 and the way i reflect on that is we had a game style that wasn't holding up and uh, the playing group itself wasn't weak but we just looked like this recessive submissive team that was losing to teams we should have beaten so what we tried to do then is adapt a new game style but as soon as we adapt a new game style we got hit with the worst injury run over a two-year period i reckon the game has ever seen and in addition to that we tried to adapt a fast contested game style um, to a team that had not really been built for that the playing list itself the attributes is much more suited to a slow chip mark style and the game just went past us so simpson has been trying to employ a game style to a list that wasn't really equipped from an attribute point of view to execute it and on top of that been hit with the worst injury run we've ever seen so it's been a flaming hot bag of shit the last couple of years and i do have faith that things will get better and you know what i'm, I'm not even too salty about the way things have gone obviously it's it's been laughably bad and nobody wants to see their team humiliated and, and i think we've gone past 
us being the joke of the competition, we are so bad that people feel bad for us and it's, it's a head scratcher. But I'm okay with that because, you know, football's not so much about how consistently good your team is over a period of time. What people remember is premierships and it's really more important to make sure you strike when you swing when you're at the top. And thankfully we did that. And I do think that if we didn't win in 2018, I, uh, I'd be looking at this period in the club with a completely different lens. Things will get better. We do have youth. We've got talented youth. You know, the prospect of Harley Reid and Elijah Hewitt playing t- together for the next, you know, 10 years or, you know, four to six years, depending how long we keep Harley Reid. It's exciting. We will get better. And there's, you know, a few gems on the list as well. Noah Long, Ryan Marrick. These guys have potential to be A-grade players in my biased opinion. But anyway, this video was kind of just to acknowledge, you know, the change that is happening at West Coast. We're seeing it in front of our eyes now. It's happening. Now, I made a video at the start of the year, which um, obviously was as aged like milk in that West Coast would be better than people expected this year. And you know what? I know this is a cop out, but the premise of that video was that we would have a better injury run. And I think it's actually been worse this year. I do think with a normal injury run, not even a necessarily good one, but with a normal injury run, we would have been better than the 2022 team but obviously we got worse. Next year, we don't have the crutch of a potentially returning Nick Nat, uh, Shuey getting his act together in terms of his hamstrings. That sounds harsh, it's not his fault. Uh, Elliot Yo as well. Jeremy McGovern potentially playing more than about eight games in a season. We, with Nat Nui, Shuey and Hearn retiring, um, there's obviously less experience and less established quality on the list. So I'm not gonna make any bold statements that we're gonna improve in terms of ladder position. I do think we'll get better. I think we've seen improved form from the youth that is more sustainable and more likely to hold up more consistently next year there's probably going to be some bad losses next year as well and we're probably going to finish bottom two i'm happy to fire off the hip and say bottom two potentially wooden spoon again next year but i think the feel of the season will be different at least that's all i can hope for so anyway guys that is my thoughts on the the changing of the guard that's happening at west coast it is a officially a new era starting from 2024 2022 and 2023 can be looked on as the back end of a premiership tilt that obviously things just went terribly wrong after we won the flag so let me know your thoughts and comments in the uh, comment section below guys what do you think uh, will happen to Adam Simpson I think there is a distinct chance now that he probably bows out of his own volition if that day comes then I'll make a more detailed video of my thoughts on that particular move but we'll see what happens Uh, still two games left in the season as I record this is a couple of days till we lose by 100 points to the Bulldogs and then hopefully um, we don't ruin pick one by beating Adelaide that would that would really sum up this year Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts are. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.